Hi everyone, it's Lauren. So today's lyric analysis is going to be Changing Phase of Evil, which is the third song. So I've got the lyrics right here. And yeah, so basically Changing Phase of Evil is about how sometimes the people that you love or just otherwise, um, let me just make sure that's, okay. <laughs> Gotta make sure these sculpted candles aren't burning because I like burned a hole in that thing, so. Anyway, all right, so Changing Phase of Evil is about how sometimes the people that you love, um, when they get triggered, can sort of like, you know, become evil for a little bit, uh, myself included. And it's about the complexity of life and how sometimes we simplify it because it's scary how complex it is. How can someone who loves me hurt me? Um, am I good or evil? And so that's what the song's about. So the first lyrics are, we like to think things are simple because we're afraid. So like I said, um, we don't like to see our loved ones as having like evil or bad qualities sometimes because how could we ever feel safe, basically? If things are so complicated, how can we feel okay? How can we feel safe? with people when we don't know when those bad qualities are going to come out and hurt me again. All right, so now here are some examples. Um, these are sort of examples of um, things aren't what they seem. And so it's about the complexity of life as well of the good and the bad that things aren't what they seem. So the first line is the model's too sick to function, which I put that in because we think of models as like, you know, physically having, you know, the desired body and everything. So having a model that's, I mean, eating disorders and modeling is like a very well-known thing at this point. But um, like, I mean, this line was a lot from, I remember Bella Hadid, she obviously, she's like a supermodel and she had like Lyme disease and she was really sick. So, you know, she has this body that looks ideal in society, but yet she's really sick and not with eating disorder with this, with this chronic illness. So, oop, this fell off, that's okay. And so that's kind of where I got that from. Um, oh my gosh, that's bothering me that that fell off. It's bothering me so much, but let it go. Let it go. I almost, I was almost gonna start it over because that fell off, but I'm such a perfectionist. I'm trying not to be because it will drive me crazy. And I'm still nervous doing this and I wanna do a good job. I'm not used to filming YouTube videos like this. So I just told myself, look, just get through like the 20 minutes of filming. No matter what it is, you don't stop. You keep going. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. Let's do it. All right, the bigger, the big, the next line is the bigger girl is the one starving herself. And with eating disorders, it's not always what the person looks like. For example, with bulimia, people, you know, can binge and they don't throw all of it up and then they can be bigger or someone could be at the start of the journey or, I've just seen a lot of cases where people have anorexia and not the typical anorexic body for a variety of reasons, like metabolism, where they start it, and they can be still really, really sick. And so, and then you can have thin people who are just naturally thin. I had um, a friend in dance and she ate a ton, she just had this really naturally thin body type and people thought she was anorexic. So don't judge eating disorders based on someone's body type because I've seen so many examples where it doesn't fit. Um, and then the next line, the celebrity with everything in the world is struggling with her mental health. It's another one. The comp complexity things aren't what they seem. I mean, being a celebrity is a dream to so many people. To get to do their art, whether it's singing or acting, to have money, to have fame, to have the adoration, I mean, it's, I mean, so many people want it. 
but just from everything I've read and observed and experienced, the way things look on the outside are not the way they feel on the inside. I mean, you have things like the 27 Club. Um, I mean, these celebrities have everything and they, they die due to a drug overdose and escapism. And, and I have to, and, and I hear all this mental health and I have to think that can't actually be that happy. I mean, I've just read so many stories of so many miserable celebrities who have everything externally. And so that's kind of scary because it's like, wait, they have everything and they're still that miserable. Like, how can I ever escape the misery I'm in? I don't even have that. And, but it's complex. Like you could be happy with nothing or <laughs> that's a line later or miserable with everything because it's not the external, it's the internal. Um, all right. That is actually the next line. Some are happy with nothing because it's the internal, not the external. That actually like is how you feel, but nothing is ever enough. So like I just said, and then there are other people who chase that high, chase that addiction of more fame, more things, more money, and they're still never satisfied. And then some people don't care about that. They're satisfied with nothing, just their family or they don't. So it, it's the spice of life. The next line. This is a scary thing for the world. The people who love hurting others feel more secure than the ones who want to help. <sighs> there is evil in the universe, in this world. There is pure evil. There is. It exists. And there are people like that. I, and I know saying pure evil is like, is not what the song's about at all. The song's about like how everyone has different parts, but there are people and things that are mostly evil, I would say. Um, and it does seem that people who are evil or on the, the negative path, if you say, they don't really struggle with insecurities. Like, you know, they just, they just do it. They don't, they don't care what other people think, which is actually like, that's one of the things to learn. I mean, don't be a sociopath, but like people who are evil, they don't, they don't care about what others think. I mean, but then the people who are good and, and want to contribute to the world and help people and or share their talent with the world, they're all like, oh, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. And it's just kind of like sickeningly ironic that the people who bring the most good to the world are the ones who feel like they're not good enough. And then the people who bring evil to the world are completely confident in it. It's just one of those messed up things. <laughs> all right. Now the chorus. We're afraid. We're afraid of the changing face of evil. So we're afraid of this uncertainty, not knowing, is this person good? Is this person bad? Since pretty much most people were a mix, which part is gonna come out? Are they going to hurt me? Am I a good or a bad person? Which part will come out? Who am I? We don't wanna see, yeah. Okay, yeah, we're afraid. We're afraid of the changing face of evil. We don't want to see the devil in the eyes of those they love. We love. So yeah, we, we don't want to see that dark side in ourselves, in, in, in the people who are close. We like to believe that the people who are close to us are good and all the evil in the outside world is external. That's, that's, that's not me. That's not my family. But the truth is we all slip into darkness and negativity and sometimes we don't know when, especially with a, with a trigger, an emotional trigger, a trauma. So we, we don't want to see that devil in our, in our close circle because it, it makes us feel really uncomfortable. All right, now next. If good is stronger than evil, which I do believe that because good um, I'm just going to check that every once in a while. All right. <laughs> um, because good or the light is all about integration and working together. 
and then evil is all about separation and power and control. So like the metaphysical reason for like why good is stronger is because good is about uni unity and then it's stronger. Although evil can do a lot of harm and it's also very powerful. Evil takes, good gives. There's a whole metaphorical thing to go on that. But it is stronger because you're bringing everything together. Um, why doesn't God just kill the devil? They tolerate each other. One can't exist without the other. So yeah, if good's stronger than evil, why does the devil exist? Why does evil exist? Why don't we just get rid of it? Um, and the last two lines, they tolerate each other. One can't exist without the other. Um, it's just the nature of the universe in my beliefs. Um, you can't have light without dark, good without bad, love without separation. And it's it has to exist for the other to exist. And then sometimes dark can bring you to the light. So it's very complex and that's scary, which is kind of what the song's about. Um, yeah, the, the universe is built on opposites, so one can't exist without the other, but you get to choose with your thoughts and your emotions and your frequency where you sit, where, where on this spectrum is who you are. All right, second verse, the model doesn't feel skinny enough. Um, the bigger girl learned how to love herself. So yeah, we see, like I said, the model, the idealized body type, and then they're the ones that are insecure, but then the girl who like is bigger and stuff is actually secure because she learned to love herself. So logically you think, oh, she's thinner. Um, she's thinner. She must be this amount of secure in herself. She's this size, this amount of secure in herself, but it's not that simple. Um, has very little to do with what you look, but how you feel about yourself. And so, yeah, the, the, celeb, the celebrity with opportunity just wants her freedom. This is such a common archetype. Like I, I just think of Aladdin is the biggest one I think of, of Jasmine. I was a magic carpet in Aladdin, Did not the Aladdin. It was a community theater production. I'm not like, oh, I am the magic carpet. Like, no. Um, but yeah, this person, she's a princess, she gets to rule, but she just wants to be free. And so there are so many people in the world that like, I, I just want opportunity, I want opportunity. But then some of the people who have it, they just want freedom. And so it's it's one of those like weird things in the world that seems like out of sorts, it's like, <laughs> and it's kind of scary. It's like, you could be living someone else's dreams but be miserable and then just weird. Then this line. <laughs> the people who see themselves as better seem to cause the most suffering. I know narcissist is such a buzzword in today's society right now, but Basically, anyone who thinks that they are superior, their attitudes are superior, their ideas are superior, you know, certainly, which means they'll never, they'll ne never take an input from anyone else. They're always right. And everyone else doesn't measure up to them. So when someone feels superior or above other people, they tend to use them, treat them like objects. Um... I, uh, this might be a tight subject, but, um, I just think of, this is an opinion that I've heard about Iranian men. This probably doesn't apply to anyone, but, and I know I, this might be triggering, but the, the head scarves and stuff, it's kind of, I've heard they, they tend to like cheat on women, treat them like objects. Um, I don't like the idea that they have to cover their hair. It's like back to Medusa again, like, oh, it's the woman's fault for tempting him, so I have to cover up the hair. I've just heard that they don't 
respect women because they see them as inferior. And that's not just in that country. It's still like a lot of wounds we're working through today. But I don't want to like disparage anyone's religion. Um, these are just things I've heard. I can be totally wrong. Um, there could be people that respect it, the other people's opinions, but that's just sort of like some things that I have heard. All right. Um, yeah. <laughs> because you don't see them as equal. So if they suffer, what do you care? It's just an object. Um, just an animal, which we eat prey, which I do not agree with. I love my animals. <laughs> we have um, three guinea pigs, two rabbits. They're amazing. It hurts my heart that they take these guinea pigs and then use them for experiments. Like they're, they're just like the sweetest little animals. Or take rabbit's tails and like, like take the tails and have them on a tassel like is some kind of good luck charm. I mean, it's creepy. It's disturbing. I mean, I... <laughs> I should probably go vegan if that's what I believe. It's it's so easy not to though. You don't think of it as an animal just on a plate. It's 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 complex, like everything else. Some people treat animals wonderfully, some people abuse them. It's just that complexity that's scary. And then okay. Then this is the bridge. Things aren't always what they seem. Um, and those are all the examples I gave with like the, the model or the bigger girl or like the celebrities, like that things aren't always what they seem. Like the celebrity, their life seems perfect, but their experience may be really, really painful. Because I know, I you know, I mean, Demi Lovato, I mean, she almost... She almost killed herself with drugs and she has every, you know, everything that people would dream of, you know, I mean, and, and these aren't like, and people say like, oh, like, well, they're celebrities. They're like, they're selfish. They're childish. They're immature. That's why they do it. And anyone who's like really done art, whether it's singing or acting it, you know, when you, when you, um, when you watch like singing and acting, um, ah, the refrigerator, that's annoying. Ah. I got really annoyed. Let's keep going. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. I just got to keep going. So, ah. Sorry, I got super flustered. Oh my gosh. Because that noise just like irritated the crap out of my nervous system. Let's finish this, oh my gosh. Um, yeah, so Demi Lovato almost killed her. Oh yeah, they say that celebrities are, oh, they're immature, but anyone who's done art knows how much hard work goes into, you know, writing a song to acting. I mean, acting seems so glamorous, but I have done it. It is not. Like, it is... It is long, grueling. It is dull. Sometimes you do the scene one line at a time and you just repeat the same line over and over again in the same tones so that you get it from four or five different angles. It's kind of a nightmare to me, honestly. And I, I went into it because I'm like, oh... Um... I love, like, I love movies. I'm a huge, like, Star Trek fan, huge movie fan. Like, I've always loved them. And I'm like, if I love watching them so much, I bet I love actually doing it more. And I did it for years. It took me years to, like, accept that the dream was not like how I imagined it. I did not like it. And um, music I like better, which is why, why I'm doing it. Um, and I record the songs, like I, I just sing it all the way through for the way I do it. Um, I'm happy with it. It sounds fine. But like if, like with Demi Lovato or like with those like really high at those like, um, recording places, they'll do sometimes just like 
couple notes at a time for a whole song and just repeat it to get those. I mean, it's grueling, it's long. I, Lady Gaga, she's like, it's a lot of hard work. And yeah, it doesn't seem like it from the outside, but that's because it's meant to be entertainment. Um, it's meant to look effortless from the outside. Like gymnastics, it's meant to look effortless, like, but it's not. And that's, that's the trick. And that's the, it's the, <laughs> the changing face of life or the changing face of evil. <laughs> nice little wrap up there, right? So, um, and then let what's real change what you see. So be honest with yourself about your experience. The reality was I didn't like acting. I, I wanted to like it and I didn't. So just be honest with yourself if your experience of something um, does not match up to what you imagine it to be and accept that. And the sooner you accept reality of your experience, the sooner you can adjust things to something that you really want. So thanks so much for listening. The, um, that is just the chorus again, which I already explained. So yeah, thanks so much for listening. Bye.